Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Indy Car on Friday. It's the, the 9th of August 2019. It's hard uh, on a day like this where it's pouring with rain, blowing a gale, it looks absolutely horrible out here. And I'm sitting in the middle of a rainstorm in a, in a car park in, uh, in central Glasgow. It's hard to find anything happy, any good news to relate to you today uh, about world news. But let's start by, by looking at world news because we, we tend to look at everything in Scotland through this lens of, uh, of independence and the, the battles we have against the British government and trying to find a way through this. So rather than just focusing narrowly on Scottish affairs today, I want to take a wider look at the global situation as it is just now. Brexit itself is... Um, has a direct bearing on, on how we relate to the rest of the world for very obvious reasons. If you're coming out of a massive trading block where you've had free trade available to you with 27 or even 28 other countries um, for the last 40 years, and suddenly you come out and you're on your own, you then turn around to look at the United States for help because that is primarily what the British government says it is going to do. And uh, Recently, the the former Foreign Secretary of, of the United States under uh, Obama's administration has been speaking publicly about what he thinks will happen when Britain tries to go for a trade deal with America. Remember, America is now run by Donald Trump, whose entire policy is to put America first, to close the doors, to trade with the outside world, to stop importing so many uh, products from abroad. Now, against the backdrop of that, the United Kingdom is leaving a safe, secure, 27-country trading bloc to try and do a trade deal with a country which is trying to shut out foreign imports. And according to this, uh, this ex-Secretary uh, of State for, uh, uh, for trade, for overseas trade from the US, what he says is that Britain has basically... Um, coming out of the European Union means that Britain has zero leverage. It has no way... Uh, of extracting any kind of good trade deal from America. You'll notice that the talk of trade deals with America, even, even from the British government, says uh, a good trade deal. It does not say a free trade agreement with North America. And according to um, the former, foreign, sec the former uh, foreign Secretary for, uh, for Obama's administration, it's very unlikely that uh, America would give any kind of free trade to Britain because, frankly, there's nothing in it for America, really. Um, America would benefit far more from a, a massive free trade agreement with Europe than it would ever do from a tiny trading agreement with a tiny country like the UK. So really all that, uh, all that Bre Brexit has done for overseas trade with, with America is weakened the British position to the point where uh, the UK is seen virtually as a zombie nation, a lame duck. It's ripe for asset stripping. And the United Kingdom has one of the most uh, valuable assets in terms of its health service. Now, the UK's National Health Service is world-renowned as probably the best uh, national health service on the planet. It's funded by taxation. In the case of the uh, English or the, the British NHS is underfunded by taxation because the, the Tory government is deliberately underfunding it. But the point here is that it is a it's a jewel in the crown. It's something that's worth a lot. And if the UK wants to strike any kind of a trade deal with North America, the Americans have already said that the NHS has to be part of the negotiations. And that means they'll buy the NHS. There is no other way the Americans would get involved in health in the UK unless it was a commercial venture because the whole of the American health system is, is supported by basically private insurance companies. And that is exactly what they would do if they wanted a trade deal with the UK. They would want access to the British health market and they would want to gradually dismantle it uh, and privatise it. And, turn it into another American, a branch of an American uh, health system which is uh, entirely in private hands. So you can't kid yourself on that America is going to give us a free trade deal, they're not. They're going to give us a trade deal. But it's a trade deal in which America does not have to give Britain anything. 
because Britain really has very little to offer other than its National Health Service. So it's a very one-sided, asymmetric arrangement. Britain would get more trade with America, but even so, and on its very best deal, if it, if it did what Trump said, and got five times as much uh, trade with the United States as it does now in terms of exports, there would be a high price for that. And not only that, but that, that five times what we do now with the US still wouldn't be anywhere near as much as the business we do with Europe. And remember that World Trade Organization rules, which are, or WTO as it's known, uh, these are the terms that the British government favours after uh, it leaves the, the, the European Union. World Trade Organization, they keep quoting WTO terms. WTO terms mean massive uh, trading taxation on everything going in and out of Britain or Europe. It means the price of everything will skyrocket. Particularly things like food, dairy, meat, and farm produce are going to go up by 40% virtually overnight. Anything we import from the EU uh, will be 40% dearer. Anything we export to the EU will be taxed at another 40%, making our farmers less profitable and driving them out of business. At the moment, uh, if you think about Brexit as a part of the global system at the moment, the three Celtic nations, the three major Celtic nations of, of the United Kingdom, Northern Ireland, which isn't really a nation, right, but the, the six counties, uh, Wales, which is a principality but basically still identified as a country, and Scotland, which is clearly defined as one country in union with England, all three of them are on the brink of leaving the UK if there's a no-deal Brexit. Every single country has said the same thing. Every single part of the Celtic areas, if you like, of the United Kingdom have said exactly the same thing. If you take us out of the European Union against our uh, democratically expressed wishes, there will be trouble, there will be consequences. The consequences for Scotland will be independence. The consequences for Northern Ireland would be reunification with the South. Because if there's a no-deal Brexit, Sinn Féin has said, they will demand, not, not just ask politely for, they will demand the border poll is held. And that is part of the, um, the agreement, that's part of the Good Friday Agreement, that the people of the North and the South of Ireland have the right to have a, a poll uh, on the, the, the state of both the South and the North of Ireland, whether they should reunify both sides, both countries, if you like. Uh, the North and the South of Ireland, the six counties of the North and the Republic, all those people have the right <coughs> to a border poll. If the people of the North of Ireland are unhappy with the way the United Kingdom is running things, they can demand it. If there is a border poll, then the indications at the moment are that there would be a process which would start for the reunification of Ireland. It would take several years, it wouldn't happen overnight. In Wales, uh, when Boris Johnson visited Welsh farmers, he was told that if no deal Brexit went ahead, there would be civil unrest because of the damage that this would cause to Welsh farming interests, not alone, just the farmers themselves, not, not to mention the rest of the people of Wales. In Scotland, we know already what will happen if there's a no deal Brexit. We will have an independence referendum with or without London's uh, Section 30 order. and. We would win it at the moment. We know we would win it because there are polls showing that support for independence is above 50%. And support for holding a referendum now is also running above 50%. So both the appetite for a referendum is there and uh, the support for independence is already there and growing. And it's being underrepresented by a poll which doesn't include all of the Scottish electorate. So we know that the likelihood is that if Britain brexits, uh, especially a hard Brexit without a deal, which is looking more and more likely, then the Celtic nations of the United Kingdom will split. And all that will be left is England on its own in the Atlantic trying to do a trade deal with America. The rest of the Celtic parts of the UK, the, the islands of the Atlantic Archipelago, Ireland uh, and mainland Britain, uh, so we have you know Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, maybe also the Isle of Man. People forget the Isle of Man is actually a separate, uh, devolved, almost like a micronation itself. And I'm pretty sure that 
the people at the Isle of Man will be a bit pissed off as well and they might decide to go and throw in their lot with Scotland uh, and the Irish because they're kind of midway between everybody Wales, Northern Ireland, Scotland and there's the Isle of Man in between all three of those so it might be a good place for Man to position itself and that would leave Britain as just England England by itself uh, would have what it wanted separated itself from the Europeans separated itself from the Celts no longer supposedly supposedly supporting Scotland with their tax money which is the mythology that the English people have been sold for decades so they're going to think great we're free of all these freeloaders the jocks and the paddies and all the rest of them and the Welsh we can now get on with being terribly wealthy and, and being English and having trade deals with America but they're going to find out very quickly that the mythology they've been sold is, is all a bad tissue of lies that they needed Scotland, they needed the oil, they needed the gas, they needed our power, they needed our whiskey revenues, they needed our food revenues. Scotland's export of what is keeping um, England's um, trade deficit lower than it normally would be. Scotland is always trading at a profit. England has always traded at a loss and it will trade at a much larger loss after. Now the rest of the global situation is extremely unstable at the moment. We know that America uh, is involved in a trade um, argument, a trade war with the Chinese. The Americans are shutting out Chinese goods and putting large taxes on their imports. The Chinese have responded now by um, saying that they are going to restrict the amount of what are known as rare earth elements. Now these are very rare metals and other substances found only in China which are mined and used to manufacture things like mobile phones, high-tech electronics, batteries and so on. These are essential to modern electronic equipment, they're essential to electric cars, they're essential to virtually everything in modern life and the Chinese have 80% of these materials and they are now threatening to just simply stop exporting them to the US uh, and to basically choke off the supply of vital um, raw materials to the American high-tech industries. This war is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Trump started it, the Chinese know how to play this game, but it means that while these massive superpowers are jockeying for control over things, the rest of the world is going to suffer as well because these two countries control how these electronic gadgets are made uh, and these are the products that shape everybody's lives across the globe. So uh, bad news for everyone when there's a trade war. China is relatively unstable as well at the moment and we know that there are problems with Hong Kong. Um, the Hong Kong people are highly resistant to Chinese control and they have 20 more years before China takes full control over the island under the agreement signed with the UK when Chris Patton uh, ceremonially gave back the, well, gave the, the, the territory its freedom, its independence and there was to be this period of um, I think it was 50 years in which the Hong Kong people would run their own affairs according to the traditions uh, that had grown up under British colonial rule. Now the Chinese government is trying to introduce laws which would allow them to extradite anybody from Hong Kong to mainland China to stand trial. And the Chinese, uh, the Hong Kong people see this now that the Chinese government is going to use this as a way of plucking out troublemakers they don't like and imprisoning uh, them as political prisoners to stifle any kind of dissent before China takes full control of Hong Kong. Trouble there trouble between China and America. America is also starting an argument now with Germany over the amount of money that the German government is spending on defence. The Americans are saying if, if um, Germany doesn't spend more on soldiers and weapons then America will pull its troops out of Germany. These are the defensive troops supposedly uh, protecting the eastern border of Germany uh, and will deploy them to Poland. So America is, everywhere America goes, it's trying to bully people into doing something that they don't want to do. And it will do the same to the United Kingdom. In the middle of all that, we also have trouble in Kashmir, where India has mysteriously, uh, basically locked down the entire Kashmir area, the, the entire um, uh, region of Kashmir between Pakistan on one side and India on the other has been shut down. Everything's been switched off. 
uh, mobile phones, television, radio. There's nothing, there's no information going in or out. The streets uh, of the towns and cities in Kashmir are lined with Indian troops. Something has triggered this. Nobody is quite sure why the Indian government has done this, but I think they probably had some kind of intelligence that Pakistan was going to make some kind of move to annex the, the province. Uh, and this is India's way of preventing it. The Pakistani government's been very coy about it, and they've said that they're not planning any military uh, activity in the area at all. And the standoff continues. And it seems to me, if you look around the world, at virtually every country that's having troubles of some kind, the British uh, colonial history has touched nearly all of these countries. China, Hong Kong, right, India, Pakistan, even America with its massive gun culture, that was caused by a fear that the British would return uh, and fight again another another war, uh, another independence war against the Americans. And so America's constitution contains this clause that allows everybody um, to, to, to hold and maintain weapons and to form militias. And because of that overhang, or that hangover, sorry, from, from British colonial uh, war fighting, the Americans are now stuck with far too many weapons and a lot of nutcases using assault weapons um, basically to massacre people whenever they feel like it. America is the only country in the world that has this problem uh, and it is largely a secondary result of the war of independence against the British. In Iran as well and also uh, Palestine and Israel, all these areas touched by the British colonial hand divided down the middle when Britain left uh, and basically Britain has divided and ruled wherever it went and it has left these divisions in its wake. The global situation that you see around you now is partly um, partly down to the way the, the British colonial system worked uh, hundreds of years ago and it's left these countries divided both religiously and racially because that was the way that the British colonial system uh, divided the opposition to their occupations and it's, um, it's left a scar across the entire planet. So it's sad but true that the rest of the world is in uproar at the moment. The, um, the global economy has stalled. The experiment with globalisation that was so much, that promised so much by, by the, the, the sort of free market capitalism uh, of the 80s, 90s and, and into the early part of this century has now run out of energy. There is nothing left to exploit. Um, China has all the money because it has made all the goods for the West. The West no longer wants to buy the goods from China, so China doesn't have a market. There's a trade war going on. Everybody is looking around at how to survive this period of uncertainty. So as far as Scotland is concerned, we need to be very careful that when we do emerge out of Brexit with an independence vote, that the country is set up in such a way that it's resilient enough to survive the kinds of global forces that exist at the moment. One thing I think is essential for Scotland, and that is it must be a pacifist country. It must not have a war-fighting uh, stance at all. We've seen how that's failed countries again and again. America's, almost in, oh, America's entire economy is based on fighting wars uh, and invading other people's countries and having the largest military presence on the planet. We've seen uh, both America and Russia pulling out of nuclear strategic weapons agreements that limited the number of nuclear bombs held by these uh, big nations. America has tens of thousands of nuclear warheads. Russia, likewise. China has, has thousands as well. Even North Korea now has dozens of them. The Israelis have them, the French have them, we have them. You know, Pakistan and India have hundreds of them. And with the world being as unstable as it is, the worst thing Scotland could do at the moment would be to continue to possess nuclear weapons that belong to somebody else. And I think when we do emerge um, from the independence campaign successfully, and Ireland is reunited, and the Celtic nations can take their place again where they should always have been, as independent small countries trading with each other on these islands. All of us need to look together at how we trade with the rest of the world and how we relate in this global picture because at the moment the world is a mess. Everybody is panicking 
uh, about the lack of growth in the global economy. And so eventually this upheaval has to end with a change in the, po in the economic system that works across the globe. Because otherwise, the continued growth that we have seen for centuries, which is actually causing global warming and causing the depletion of natural resources and the extinction of thousands of species, warming of the oceans, the killing off of, of all of these other creatures and all of these other plants and animals. This is all the fault of global capitalism. And at some point this needs to stop and people all over the world need to stop and think about how they're going to carry on because we, we've reached a stage globally, not just for Scotland, but for the whole planet where we have to stop polluting it and we have to stop overpopulating it with ourselves and we have to look at how we control a population's growth is not something that should continue unabated. We need a sustainable planet and everybody needs to start thinking about that. And Scotland is in exactly the right place to do that. If we leave the UK as a result of Brexit, we will have the chance to plot a new future and to start blazing a trail which might show other countries that are developing at the moment how we can change things, how we can alter our impact on the planet and how we can conserve and maybe even uh, uh, reconstruct and rebuild the natural uh, environment that we have helped to destroy by our economic activities. There's a lot to do. Part of it's green, part of it's social, part of it's business, uh, but all of it is linked together. And while I'm sitting here in the middle of this heavy rainstorm, it just brings it home to you the fact that this kind of weather, this violent kind of weather, is going to become worse and it's going to become more common and we're going to have to pay for the damage it causes. We need to find ways now of living in this new world that we've created. Independence gives us the freedom to choose different ways of doing it. If we stick with the United Kingdom, burning fossil fuels, continuing with nuclear uh, power uh, and continuing to pollute the planet in the way that we've been doing, then we won't last long. Um, some. Uh, some experts, some planetary scientists estimate that we don't have more than a hundred years left with this civilization if we continue the way we're going. We have to change now, and as I say, this is the time where Scotland can take a lead, but we need to do it uh, as a part of the whole Brexit strategy. And I think it's perhaps time that we spoke to people in Ireland, and we spoke to people in Wales and the Isle of Man about how all of these groups of non-English nations on, the, on these islands can work together to try and come up with a better way of doing things. England wants to do its own thing. That's fine. I know, let them do that. But we have our own uh, furrow to plough and I think it's time that we started talking more seriously with other partners who feel the same way. And that will mean people in Europe, and that will mean people in Ireland, people in Wales, and even in places like Cornwall. I've heard a lot of people in Cornwall dissatisfied now as well. Um, everybody is starting to rail against what's happening in the UK. Okay, I'll leave it there for today, but remember, we're, we're at a, a threshold here. It's not all doom and gloom, but we need to take action, and we can't do it if we remain tied, shackled uh, to the museum that passes for the United Kingdom. We are living in a museum run by basically play actors in a pantomime in a historical anachronism known as Westminster. It's time for some modern governance, for some new ideas. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.